This is Open Mind. Welcome, everyone, to Open Line. Glad you're with us tonight. We are talking really once again about this Nashville property tax referendum. So last week was a big week. The judge said it was um, unconstitutional, essentially said this election cannot go forward. We've done a couple of shows on the fact there's going to be an election on that in July. Judge said, nope, that's not going to happen. Then on Friday, the Election Commission decided to appeal that decision. Obviously, there are people who disagree with that very strongly. There are people who obviously support that. It's a, one of these issues that's out there. And so we are once again going to talk about it and try and update you on exactly where everything is. And we have with us somebody who feels very passionately about one side. It's Jim Roberts, attorney for good government. Uh, Jim Roberts, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Um, in person. That they better, Look even better in person. Not Zoom. So, all right, I, I, you heard how I just kind of encapsulated everything. So Mayor Cooper slammed the decision on Friday um, by the Election Commission and said it's a hard-line partisan decision because I guess it was three Republicans voted to appeal this, two Democrats said we should not. Um, in a Republican-dominated environment, now even more taxpayer dollars will be spent prolonging this litigation that's been ruled unconstitutional by two judges. That's what the mayor said. Well, he did what, say what that. I'm sure the mayor was dancing in the streets and happy that he's not faced, which uh, really is a repudiation of his, his tax policy and his governance in the city of Nashville. Um, I, I would correct one thing. The, the court said a lot of things, but it also said that it didn't have the authority or the right to challenge some of these ballot initiatives. And in fact, out of four, I'm not, let's see, four or five of them, he actually admitted that he didn't have the right to even rule on them. So anything he said about those particular uh, amendments is, is really just what's called dicta. It's really sort of meaningless. He admitted that he didn't have a right to address these, and he didn't. Um, he got around that uh, towards the end of the opinion by basically saying, well, since one of the ballot initiatives, and really only one of them that he say was unconstitutional. And let's back up for just a second. There are how many total? There are six. There are six. six separate amendments. The primary one that gets all the attention would uh, is it deals with the property tax. Well, absolutely. That's but there are five others. Yes. And, and clearly the, the property tax one is the, is the sexiest one, so to speak. It's the most interesting, and it's the one that impacts the citizens the most. I mean, when you're elderly or you're uh, poor and you're living in, a, in your house and you've lived in for 30 or 40 years and suddenly your property tax jump up 60, 70 percent, you're going to feel that. You're going to notice that. And, and so those are the people who are being hurt by this. And so that's the one that most people uh, know about. They most think about because they got their property tax bills and they looked at it and said, this is killing us. And so that's what's really getting people's attention. But there are really other five good government amendments out there that the mayor doesn't talk about, the opposition doesn't talk about, uh, because they want to hide those and sweep them under the rug. So there are a total of six. There's the main one that's the property tax. That might be the one that when people sign a petition, that's the one they're most thinking about. Two judges have said they've, they've found problems with at least one of these provisions. Why don't you just, why do six? If the big marquee item is the property tax, why not just do the property tax? Well, we certainly thought about doing that. But we're trying to help Nashville. I mean, if you look around Nashville today, I think a lot of people, including myself, see this city heading in the wrong direction. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Cooper made some comment, a little dig, about how we don't want to have California-style referendum government. Well, unfortunately, we've got California-style debt. We've got California-style mismanagement. We've got all these California problems with homelessness and all, just they're ruining our city. They're turning us into California. And the referendum process may be the only way that saves us. So all of these. Now, let me be real clear, though. They were, the first petition was litigated, was struck down for whatever reason, and the second petition it was entirely different. It's not the same petition, and that's one of the things that the Election Commission argued. We went back and we redrafted it, and we looked at what the judge had said, whether we agreed with the judge or not. We took what the judge said as the truth, and we changed the petition, we made it conform with the judge's order, and we went forward. And it absolutely conformed to the judge's order. Now. That wasn't good enough for Metro. They, they want to keep adding goalposts. And, they, and I promise you, if we come back again a third time or a fourth time, they'll just keep making up new things that we're supposed to do. Because in the end, this is about voter suppression, about preventing people from voting, a lot more than it is about any of these particular elements. Yet an impartial judge, and now two impartial judges, have ruled that it's, that it's not appropriate, that there are problems with it, it's either confusing, things aren't properly defined, that it's problematic. Well, let, let's address that. You, that that's a really... 
I thought that was a, a very interesting element. There, one of the amendments says no more lifetime benefits, no more permanent benefits to elected officials. And the court had a question, some confusion said, about what the term elected officials means. I ask you, do you know what an elected official is? What do you think it is? Do you have a problem with that term? I, your listeners out there, uh, what, what do you think an elected official? I, I know what an elected official is. It's someone who runs for office and is elected. And yet somehow the court seemed to think that was a confusing term. So confusing that 400, 430,000 citizens aren't going to get a chance to vote on it. I don't think it's that confusing. I think elected officials is it's a simple term. Um, and keep in mind, uh, as a lawyer, I have to respect what judges rule. Absolutely, I have to abide by their rulings, but I also have the option to appeal. And I've been up on appeal, I don't know, 60 times, 70 times, and not every judge's ruling has been upheld. Um, at one time I had a really good record, the last few years haven't been as good, but you know, judges have opinions, just like lawyers have opinions, and the Court of Appeals is really going to answer this. This has statewide implications. Every citizen in this state is impacted by a government trying to suppress their right to vote. And so the, I think the Court of Appeals is going to reverse promptly. I think they're going to say, no, you don't get to keep people from voting, and we're going to have an election. I don't know if it'll be August or September or, or what, but we're going to have an election. And, and we're going to point to Mayor Cooper and say, you've spent millions of dollars trying to suppress people's right to vote. You, you need to back down. Let people vote on this. Now, conversely, he may say, um, you're forcing us to spend millions of dollars keeping this in court. Two judges have now said it's problematic for one reason or another, said it, it can't go forward. And now here we are appealing it yet again. So well, after the first time, okay, maybe. So you go back, you rewrite it, you think everything's good. And now a second judge, a second time has struck it down. And it's going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, these appeals, these lawyers aren't cheap. I'm going to tell you what minute what that lawyer makes. Who is it? Bloomstein. Uh, he's a, 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 he's been hired by the the election commission. Is That's that right? right? Twenty five thousand dollars and eight hundred dollars an hour. That seems sort of hot. So his recommendation was to move forward? I mean, I bet, because that's, <laughs> that's pretty good money. Well, understand, the election commission voted to put this on the ballot. They exercised their authority and their, their expertise on the elections. They made the decision to put this on the ballot, the correct decision. And Metro came in and sued the people of this community, of this town, and tried to prevent that from going on the ballot. Um, the judge had an opinion. Um, I, but I do think it's important that why he kept this up. The reason we're not voting for this in July of this year is because when the judge struck down one of the provisions, he ruled that he didn't have the authority, the jurisdiction, to rule on five out of the six. But he said, in his opinion, that, well, since we don't know, what if, what if the people wanted all six on the ballot and one of them gets to get on there, so we don't know if they want the other five, so we're just going to keep them all off. Uh, it would be almost like if I, if you sent me to the store to buy 10 things and one of them was sold out and I just came home and said, well, I didn't get anything because you wanted 10 things and one of them was available, so I just assumed you didn't want the other nine. That's, I think, not a good argument. And I think, I think the chancellor uh, failed us as a city when he basically said, you know, all those people who signed that, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of people signed this petition and, you know, they don't get everything they want. So we're not going to give them anything. I don't think that's the way that our government should operate. Um, I did my best to put all six of these out for the people. They signed it. They wanted it. It says they're separate amendments multiple times. They understood that. How, how you can really justify saying, well, if you don't get everything, you get nothing. Um, I don't think the Court of Appeals is going to back that. So that issue is, is something called decoupling, is that right? And that's, that's where, okay, I sign, I'm, I'm in front of the supermarket and someone comes up and asks me to sign this and, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to sign this and I read all six things and I'm like, I, I support this and I sign this. If, I, if you remove one of those items, so the judge removes the one about benefits saying it's confusing, can we be sure that I would have signed in front of that supermarket. I guess that's their argument. That's a, that's a great do you Do you feel like if he had taken one away, would you be okay with that? Well, um, no, I would not be okay with it because I think they're all right. The question is, he didn't just take one away. He took six away from that person. He took six opportunities to make Nashville a better place from that voter. Now, the voter doesn't have to vote. Remember, all this did was put it on the ballot. So I could have looked at this and said, you know, I think we should give lifetime benefits to Metro Council members. You serve eight years, I want to pay for your health care for 70, 80 years. So I, I say, yeah, let's sign it, let's put it on the ballot, and I vote no on that one on Election Day. All this did was say, I want people to vote on it. Um, and there's still an election to be held. 
And so, so I think it's a little disingenuous. This isn't about wondering what people wanted. You know what people wanted because they signed it. They wanted six separate amendments on the ballot. And if they were unhappy, if they went to the poll on election day and said, wait a minute, I wanted number one to be on there and it's not there, they can vote no. And they have their exercise, the right to vote. They had their opportunity to express what they wanted. Uh, and that was denied them intentionally by our own government. What do you think about the argument about this being partisan? So the Election Commission <laughs> has three Republicans, two Democrats, and it was a partisan vote. The Republicans said, we need to appeal this and, and prolong this. Democrats said, two judges have ruled, let's end this. You know, what, what about the partisan nature of this? Well, I've been dealing with the Election Commission for over 20 years. And when it was controlled by Democrats, the odd thing is it was never referred to as partisan. When it was three Democrats and two Republicans back in the 2000s, never once did I see an article or a, uh, this is all pre-internet, so there wasn't any blogs, but never once was there an article talking about the partisan uh, election commission. The election commission is partisan. The, the members are picked by the different parties and it's based on the representation of the legislature. It's like that in every county. Um, this is not new. That somehow though that this is an idea, that this is a partisan idea, I think it's a little disingenuous. Um, this is about voter suppression, and you're either for it or you're against it. Um, the Election Commission made a decision that this met the criteria, and the question is if people get to vote on it. I'm, I'm disappointed um, in the people that voted no. Uh, A.J. Starling is, is a fine man. I've known him. I've litigated against him for 20 years. He is a good man. I'm disappointed that he would think it would be okay to keep people from voting. Uh, I don't know the other Democratic uh, person. I know that she was a lawyer with the ACLU, so there's probably a little partisanship there. But why would a lawyer with the ACLU, why would the American Civil Liberties Union be against people voting? Um, I, I would have trouble sleeping at night if I had made that decision. Uh, so I'm, not, I'm in favor of voting, and so I sleep just fine. <laughs> where do we, well, and again, the argument is it, it, uh, it could be vague or hard to understand, or that it could really dramatically alter metro government and harm, I guess, metro government and all that. that those are the people that, that, that feel you know, the other side. That's, that's some of what they would say. But when do you think there'll be a final decision on this? So well, you've, it's been appealed, it's being appealed now. What's, what's the process? And would you appeal this again? Well, remember, I didn't appeal. Let's just be really honest. The Election okay. Commission right. appealed their own case. I was not a part of that case. I started to intervene actually on behalf of For Good Government and I chose not to because I didn't want to interfere. I didn't want to make this about our organization. The Election Commission did the right thing. They exercised their authority under state law. They made a decision. They recognized that we had redrafted the petition, that it met all the criteria that had been added on to the Metro Charter. And, and we had done exactly what the chancellor and what the law required. And they voted to put it on the ballot. Now, Metro sued the next day, and, and they sued to prevent the people from voting on this. So we already had an election scheduled. We already were going to have an opportunity to vote on this, and our government sued to stop you from voting on this. I just think that's wrong. I think there's, when well, you have what we call defaults in the law, and the default is you get to vote. You have to make prove that people don't get to vote. You have to, you know, take some effort. You get to run for office. If I want to run for office, the default is I get to run. And if I want to vote on a referendum or participate in the referendum process, the default is I get to do that. When the government is, their default is you don't get to do those things, really bad things happen. Let me ask a few more questions. Sorry. Right, so the first time you brought this up and, and a judge said it was um, not, not appropriate or whatever, and, and it failed or whatever. Did you appeal that ruling? No. No, so that, that we didn't. You that. didn't appeal that ruling. So this ruling is being appealed. So this is kind of new territory that we're now going to an appellate court. Well, then let me explain why, though. The underlying case from the 2020 case, we'll call it, um, actually has not had a final order in it. Like what really happened is uh, we, we sat back, we looked at the judge's order, judge entered order, judge entered order in November of 2020. And I went to my folks and said, look, we have two choices. We can appeal this, we can take this aggressive appellate process that's expensive and time consuming, or we can just go back and redraft it. Take the judge's criticisms, right or wrong, and follow what she said. She said we were supposed to have uh, charter sections in there. There's nothing in the Metro Charter that requires you to put your charter sections in a referendum. We added them in there, right or wrong. Uh, we weren't going we to waste our time fighting with the judge on this, but that case actually doesn't have a final order. It has been reported that we didn't appeal it. It's just not accurate. 
we don't it's not an appealable case at the moment uh, it will be at some point and we'll make a decision then we're trying to save the taxpayers money I mean when you hear about all these legal fees and you sort of laugh at the lawyers making all that all we had to have was an election and I can almost promise you by the time we come back down from an appeal will Metro will spend more on attorneys fees trying to suppress people's right to vote than the cost of the election well, when you, yeah, $800 an hour, I bet. I mean, sure. it's astounding, really, when you, I'm, I'm surprised by that. But, all right, so what, if this were to fail, will you uh, redraft it? I mean, what, what's the plan going forward? If, if this appeal gets, um, I guess, upheld, what do, you, what do you do? Do you go back and, and come up with six new things and kind of take whatever they say? Or, or do you say, okay, we're, we're kind of not going anywhere here? Well, remember, this, this isn't about me in any way. This is about people that are part of this organization, that support what we're trying to do. I think most people recognize that we're trying to set up some guardrails to this city, that we see a city that is fiscally out of control, that is acting irresponsibly, and is going to destroy the city that we love. I've been in Nashville for 25 years. My family's been in Middle Tennessee for 200 years. I love this town and I see my government destroying. I don't know if most people realize 10 years ago we had a budget of about 1.5, 1.6 billion. Our budget that was passed last week or two weeks ago, 2.6 billion. We've increased our budget $100 million a year, including last year in the middle of a pandemic. This is a spending problem, an out of control spending problem. And uh, there's no future to that. With $3.6 billion and more debt than the state of Tennessee, um, we have irresponsible, irresponsible people running this city, and we need to set some guardrails up. That's all this does. What we do if it doesn't pass? I'll go back to my folks. I'm just a simple country lawyer. Uh, my wife would shoot me if I put all millions of dollars into this. I mean, she'd, uh, there are people, though, who believe in this city that are fearful for what's happening in this city. Uh, and so we might go back. If, it, if the Court of Appeals says you have to have an election, we'll be back in two years with some more good ideas. I mean, there are a lot of good ideas. You'd be amazed. Every day I get phone calls and emails saying, you know, you need pension reform. We have unfunded pension liabilities that are going to take this city down. Okay, I can only solve so many problems at a time. But that is a huge issue. Is um, that something voters should, should vote on? Or should we elect people that can then study these things? I mean, do we want every little thing to be approved by a referendum? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Th I agree. With that. But take something like lifetime benefits for council members. That has been an issue and should be an issue with citizens. People are mad about that. They've been mad about it for how long? Oh, 15, 20 years. How long has the council been talking about doing something about it? Oh, 15 or 20 years. The council is never going to end benefits for themselves. Just, just you, you, you just, you wait by the mailbox for the letter if you want to. They're never going to do it. So the people are going to do it. That's when the people need to step up, is when the government fails to act. Um, you know, one of the reasons we're in so much trouble is our government has used the bonding process to just finance the government basically while overspending for the last decade. We need to end that. We need to have a responsible government. We need to make our commitments to our, our retirees, to our, to our employees. Um, and we can't do that because we're too busy giving away the city. Uh, we're too busy taking care of Amazon and not Antioch or, or Oracle instead of Old Hickory. Um, it's clear to me that this government, unfortunately, doesn't care about the citizens. They care more about the people moving here than the people who've lived here their lives. I've lived over half my life here, and I love this town. And everything I'm trying to do is to benefit Nashville. And you don't have to agree. You can vote no on any one of these. But I hope you have a good reason. I hope you're not just scared into it by some less than honest folks. So that kind of sets the table. So uh, we're going to take a break, and then we'll, we'll come back and we'll take calls. Uh, there's the number, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. Your thoughts, comments, questions, give us a call. We'll be back right after this.